So I was looking at Acts 28.13, and I was looking at the name of the city, Pudioli, and I was thinking that maybe there's something in the meaning of the name of the city that we need to use in the interpretation, in the astronomical interpretation of verse 13. Uh, just like how we found out that the city name Regium means rupture, and therefore refers to the Milky Way. So, uh, by the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about with any of this, then you have to watch my most recent video on my channel right here. And uh, it's only about 15 minutes long and it explains uh, what we're doing here in this astronomical interpretation. So anyway, I looked at, I took this name, Pudioli, and I looked at it online. And this is what I found. The name Pudioli is generally understood to come from the noun Pudius, originally meaning a well. This word in turn comes from a larger pu root, meaning to cleanse, from which also come words like pure and purge, and the Latin adjective pudis, meaning cleansed, bright, clear, and pure. So that means that the name of the city, Pudioli, has to do with wells and with water and with cleansing. So then I looked at Stellarium along the Masroth after the rupture here, so after Regium, for anything that has to do with wells or with water or with cleansing. And then right away you see Aquarius where you have the man pouring out a jug of water onto the ecliptic, you know, as if he's like cleansing everything that comes through it. So all the planets and the sun and the moon travel along the ecliptic from right to left and they are traveling through this water here, like taking a shower or something. So um, I was thinking that maybe that's how we need to properly interpret, astronomically interpret uh, verse 13. So Pudioli is therefore a reference to Aquarius. So what we were doing was in that verse, it says we came to Regium, or in other words, the Milky Way. And then after one day, the south uh, wind blew. And then the next day we came to Pudioli. So we interpret that as two days. So here we have uh, July 19th, and you can see the moon here in uh, the rupture, AKA Regium. And so we just went forward two days, right? And that took us to the full moon. And then from there, we applied the seven day Terry uh, in Pudioli, which took us to just about um, here, right? Just past the rapture fish cord in Aries. But if in this verse here, Pudioli needs to be astronomically interpreted as Aquarius, then this verse is basically saying that, okay, the moon comes to the Milky Way, and then the next stop is Aquarius. And so in that case, instead of the moon arriving at the rupture here and then going two days, uh, we need to go back. So here is the moon at Regium, or the rupture, and then we go forward one, two, three, four, five, about five days, and then it's in Aquarius and therefore also in Pudioli. And at that point, we apply the seven day Terry in Pudioli, okay? So then you go forward another seven days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven days. And this is now July 31st, okay? And now the moon is up here near the horns of Taurus the bull. And coincidentally or not coincidentally, that seven day Terry seems to take you right across the celestial sea here. This part of the sky is known as the Celestial Sea because a lot of the constellations have to do with uh, animals or creatures that live in the sea. So you have like Pisces, Astrinus, you've got Cetus, the sea beast or the whale, and then you've got Pisces. So you've got the two fish jumping out of the water here or jumping out of the sea. So anyway, this new interpretation extends our watch window by about three days. Okay, so uh, July 30th and 31st and Incidentally, there's actually a rare double meteor shower on those two days of July 30th and 31st. Uh, and that's actually the Aquarids and the Capricornids. So Stellarium shows that to you right here. So these are those, uh, these are the constellations that those meteor showers originate from. And let's see, another thing that was shown to me by Pam Bukowski is that on or around this date of July 31st, Mars, the red planet, moves into a position within the constellation of Taurus the bull, which seems to give the bull the appearance of having two glowing red eyes. So you've got uh, its right eye, which is the star Aldebaran, which is a red giant star, 
which means it has like a red appearance. And then Mars moves into that position uh, to give it its second red eye. So <laughs> on that date, uh, Taurus the bull, and remember, the bull has to do with judgment, okay? Taurus the bull will have two glowing red eyes, and Jupiter will be between the horns, okay? So uh, how's that for a judgment sign, you know? Uh, it just looks like, it, it's going to look like a really angry bull with these two glowing red eyes. And another commenter showed me that uh, on the Wikipedia entry for Aldebaran, for that Aldeb Aldebaran star, uh, the name of that star in ancient Greek was Lampadias, which means li literally torch-like or torch-bearer. So <laughs> this this alignment here is happening at the same time, you know, this alignment with Aldebaran, the torch bearer, is happening at the same time of the Olympics, you know, which has a ceremony uh, involving carrying a torch. So I just thought that was a pretty interesting alignment there, pretty interesting coincidence. And is this Aldebaran star anywhere in scripture? Well, I looked it up and it actually is in at least one translation. Okay, so I'm looking here at the Aramaic Bible. And in Job 9.9, 9, it says, He who made Pleiades and the star Aldebaran and the giant Orion and the circuit to the south. So I think that in most translations, it translates Aldebaran as the bear. Uh, but this makes a lot more sense to me because if you look at the sky, so it says Pleiades, Aldebaran, and Orion. And if you look at the sky, you've got Pleiades right here, and then Aldebaran, and then Orion. So right here in the same area of the sky. And the bear, I don't know where the bear is, but it's nowhere near that. You know, Canis, or not Canis, but uh, Ursa Major. Okay, the Ursa Major is way up here. It makes more sense to me that it would be referring to a single area of the sky. So, yeah, this, I mean, it seems like Job 9, 9 is referring to Aldebaran. And that's also interesting because um, 99, in Gematria is Rapture. So is that a little hint from the Lord? And then on top of that, if you consider that Aldebaran forms the eye of Taurus the Bull, and Aldebaran is a star, and what do stars do? Uh, they twinkle, okay? So we've got twinkling of Taurus's eye, okay? Or the twinkling of an eye. And that should remind you immediately of 1 Corinthians 15.52, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, okay? At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. In the twinkling of an eye. So was that another hint by the Lord pointing to the twinkling of Aldebaran in the eye of Taurus the Bull constellation, okay? At, and at the point where <laughs> Taurus has this has this like two red eyes right two glaring angry red eyes so that seems to be perfect celestial imagery for judgment to begin and we know that when sudden destruction falls uh god will take his children out of the world and these two glowing red eyes in taurus the bull also reminded me of something back in 2022 which some of you may remember now this was the 2022 Birmingham Commonwealth Games opening ceremony. And a lot of people had noted at the time of how this really looks like people worshiping a bull. But what I really wanted to show was uh, the fact that this bull has red eyes. Okay, so they actually lit the eyes up red. And it's on both sides. You can't really see it from, the, from this perspective in this video, but if you look online uh, and search Google Images, you can see that they lit both eyes up to be red. So was this a hint of what's going to occur in the sky at the end of this month. Well, you have Taurus um, having these two red eyes formed by the Aldebaran red giant star and the red planet Mars. Are they, are they telling us there that that's when they're going to start uh, World War III? And this may also explain the trend over the last few years of people replacing their profile pics uh, with these red laser-like eyes. Uh, I think it's called Bitcoin laser eyes because it has something to do with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Uh, but yeah, is this just a, a trend that Satan planted in order to mock the blind people um, with this uh, alignment in Taurus that looks like uh, two red eyes? Uh, because on that date, 
uh, or around that date, the beginning of the tribulation starts, you know, and judgment falls. And this also brings to mind the Terminator films in which Arnold Schwarzenegger plays a cyborg from the future and that cyborg has these two glowing red menacing eyes. And the film's called Judgment Day. So were, were we being shown here that same configuration in Taurus that occurs at the end of this month where you have Taurus having these two red eyes formed by Aldebaran, the red giant star, and Mars, the red planet. And remember, in this film franchise, Arnold Schwarzenegger's big tagline was, I'll be back. Now, who is the most famous person in history for saying that he would be back, that he would return? Well, that would be Jesus Christ. So were we being shown here that when this configuration in Taurus occurs, uh, not only is that Judgment Day or the beginning of Judgment, but also the day that uh, Jesus Christ returns for his church. And there's also a film that uh, a few folks were talking about a couple weeks ago, because uh, in the film there's this boat that has the name Rapture in it, and that film is actually called Red Eye. It's a 2005 film. So is that, uh, you know, another connection there between the Rapture and that uh, configuration in Taurus of those two red eyes there. And Brother Andreas pointed out to me earlier today that the lead actor of this film, Red Eye, is the same actor who plays Robert Oppenheimer in last year's Oppenheimer film, which uh, is about the atomic bomb. So isn't that an interesting connection as well? And in case you're wondering, they also show the red eyes in I Pet Goat 2 in the scene where this boy seems to be receiving uh, a gun or a rifle as a gift because there's a bow around it, a bow tie. And this other character is untying that bow right when they show you the red eyes. So are they making their an association between that configuration in Taurus and the beginning of war, you know, with this rifle here? And wouldn't the expression red eye flight also be a nice hint? Are we going to take our flight on Harpazzo Airlines when Taurus has these two red eyes on July 31st or around there? I hope so. However, if August begins and we're still here, then the next watch date that I would look at would be August 4th, uh, because that's exactly 1335 days after this woman became the first person in the world to receive a certain medical treatment that we're not allowed to discuss. So you can see here from that date in 2020 to August 4th uh, is 1335 days. And it says in the book of Daniel, uh, chapter 12, verses 11 and 12. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred ninety days. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. Okay, so that's 1335 days. All right, so let's keep looking up. We may only have a couple days more, or at most about a week. So thank you for watching the video, Maranatha, and God bless. The gospel is the good news of how Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, came to this earth to die on the cross for our sins. He was buried and then he rose again three days later. He did this to give us eternal life in heaven and to save us from hell. The Bible says in Acts 16.31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Once you're saved, you're always saved. Jesus said in John 6:47, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. So to be saved from hell and to have the gift of eternal life, you must trust Christ alone.